<laughs> what is that? Start, start off before the prayer with your roll call. Who's not here? You're live. You're live. Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're having too much fun today. <clears throat> first things first, I need to thank so many people for yesterday. We had 33 volunteers from our church here yesterday. That's, that's an amazing number of people to work on what's happening in our community. We had 58 new visitors, not counting people who came to listen to bands or the bands. And that, that was 20, 26 adults and about 20 some uh, children. And I, I just wanna thank everybody for the hard work you put in and the ability to let the community know how much we love them. So again, to all of the people of the church, thank you so much from your pastor's heart. We're, uh, we're entering some new territory. And uh, with that, Pastor Lori's gonna be speaking to us today. And when she does, she's gonna be emphasizing the real need, the absolute need in our life to have the Holy Spirit come in all of his fullness. And she's really setting up a sermon for myself next week that's going to be a dovetail into what she's speaking about. And, and we're gonna be going to the day of Pentecost. And when this whole thing started, one of, the, one of the things that we were gonna do is we were gonna have a big Easter celebration, we were gonna have a big Pentecost celebration this year. We were gonna do things really differently. And then of course the plague hit. And when it did, when it did, it, it took away all that planning that we had made. And I often said to God, what, what are you going to do, Lord? Um, I guess the best laid plans of men and not of you. And now I look at this and when, when she preaches today and I preach next week, it'll be exactly what should have been about four months ago. And God brings it around, doesn't he? He always has his timing, his way, and it's great to discover his way. So let's go to prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we are gathered in your house. We thank you so much for the ability to serve in your name, to love others in your name, and to be a blessing to others. I ask you now that your Holy Spirit would come down and fill this place, that each and every person would feel your presence more than they ever have before. And I ask for a special anointing for Pastor Lori as she brings your word to us. May our ears be open, may our minds be open to hear from you, Lord, from heaven. And we just invite you now to come and worship with us as we worship you, so that you would be the center of everything. May you be pleased with every word of our mouth, every praise of our heart, and may your name be high and lifted up. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, praise is rising. That's the first song that we're going we're gonna to sing today. That's why we're here. We're here to praise God. We're here to praise him today, corporately, and to bring that out into the world during the week. So if... If you're led to, please stand up. If you, you know, you're welcome to sit. But if you're led, please stand. And we are going to uh, start out with this song called "Praise Is Rising." When we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all. Your way among us, we 
welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new. Cause when we see you, we find strength to miss the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, welcome you here, Lord Jesus. special thing here. Would you call in Melinda? Would you ask Melinda to come in for a second? Come on in, Melinda. It's like the price is right. Melinda, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> You're the next contestant on The Lord is Right. <laughs> okay, well, we just want to, well, we're, we're just very happy that you guys are here and you're leading our church. And, but, and we wanted just to take a moment out to acknowledge your, if I have this right, your 35th wedding anniversary? 34th wedding anniversary. I, I see. I am, I am being positively anticipating the future here. Uh, you still got a ways to go to catch up with Soph and I, but you're you're on the way. But anyways, uh, these flowers are you, from you, from the ladies, I believe, Carla and and Phyllis. Uh, you, you can take them, and uh, but we just want to thank you and acknowledge your uh, 34th anniversary. Yay! Let's give me a hand here. This is an, a new song for, for us, but it's really, um, I'm hoping that you've heard it, and it's a very, got a very simple melody to it, so let's, uh, and I think that you'll like it, very popular. Worship. 
worship you. We worship you. You are here working in this place. We worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. We, we are here working in this place. We worship you. We worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I
way you make a beautiful world. Light in the darkness, that is who you are. Every now and then, we like to have a fun song. <laughs> Glorifies God. <laughs> Loudly. Can you name that note? <laughs> it glorifies God, and it, uh, but it's also a whole lot of fun. I'm sorry, a little. Cr I, uh, <laughs> there's little hairs coming off this microphone the whole time I'm singing. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> thought I would add that. Uh, this is a. This is a song that was, I, I, honestly, I don't know where this song came from. I learned it from a friend of mine, John Hudak, who's a, uh, a, a pastor at an evangel evangelical church. And um, uh, I think he said a friend of his wrote it, but I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys could let me know, but it's sure, I think it's a fun song. Uh, it's called Jai, 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 and Jai is, I guess. That's joy. It means joy, joy, joy. So. Jai, 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 Jai in the Holy Ghost. Jai, 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 Jai in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Jai in the Holy Ghost. Jai, 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 the Jai in the Holy Ghost. Jai, 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 the Jai in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil steal your Jai. Don't let the devil steal your Jai. Don't let the devil steal your Jai. Jai in the Holy Ghost. I got a new love. Jai, 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 I got a new life. If anybody asks me, they say, What's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus on my mind. I've got a new life. I've got a new life. I've got a new life. If anybody asks me, I say, What's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus on my mind. I've got a new life. The Jai, 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 the Jai and the Holy Ghost. Jai, 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 the Jai and the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil steal your Jai. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. I've got a new life. I've got a new life. If anybody asks me, I say, what's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus on my mind. I've got a new life. 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 Cha cha cha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. You may be seated. Oh, I'm sorry, you know what, uh, you may uh, bring the offerings up, and if you are online and would like to give, um, the offerings are at clintonnazarene.org, and we thank you very much.
Our reading this morning <clears throat> comes from the <clears throat> Romans, Paul's word to the Romans. Chapter 1, verses 8 to 15, Paul begins to talk to the people there that he hopes to visit soon. And here is what he had to say. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, that your faith is spoken of throughout all of the world. <clears throat> for God is my witness, whom I serve with all of my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you in my prayers, making request, if by any means, that now I might be allowed in some way to come to you and visit you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be well established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by our mutual faith, one to the other. Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I had planned to come to you many times, but I was hindered every single one of them. That I might have some fruit among you now, I plan to come to you, that I might have fruit among the other Gentiles as well. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me now, I am ready to come to you and preach the gospel in Rome as well. The word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. So this morning, I um, had a plan. And my plan was to demonstrate my PowerPoint skills. And I had beautiful images of different things that represent what we're about to speak about. And either the Lord or the enemy had a different plan. So last evening, at some point along the way, my computer at home decided to corrupt my PowerPoint file. I don't know if there's a virus in my computer or not, but to suffice it to say, listen up. Because the title of this morning's message is Be Ready. And so for me this morning, it was Be Ready, whether or not you got PowerPoint, Laurie. And last night, Pastor Scott texted me and he said, are you ready for tomorrow? I said, well, hopefully God is ready because that's the message for today. No matter what we are doing or where we are, we need to be ready for whatever stands in front of us. I could almost stop there. But as we become before the Lord this morning, I'll tell you that these two simple words of be ready do not begin to express what has been laid upon my heart. I struggle to put into words the sense of urgency and importance of this call that is being sent out by the Lord to each and every one who is a follower of Jesus Christ. We have a mission, and each of us has been chosen as followers of Jesus for such a time as this. A time when we see great division across our land. A time when we are experiencing massive wildfires. Locusts consuming parts of Africa. Pandemic illness on a worldwide basis. Spotted lantern flies, have you seen them yet? Killing trees here in our community. Violent demonstrations, division in the church, a loss of trust in our government, a loss of trust in our safety in our communities, a loss of trust in our neighbors and one another. Fear, fueled by the media, is the order of the day. John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Are we going to stand back and let that happen? Or are we ready to stand on our faith in the truth that Jesus came so that we have life and that we, and that they, that we may have it more abundantly? Let me repeat that. Jesus came so that we can have life and that we may have it more abundantly. Amen? Those two thoughts are in one scripture. 
Jesus doesn't want us to fear. He wants us to live in the time that we're living in, to live life abundantly. These past weeks and months, Pastor Scott has been teaching and encouraging us to fulfill our mission as ambassadors of Christ. Not a race that is run alone, one that is strengthened by community and empowered by the Holy Spirit. A race that is transformational as it unfolds with each person individually and collectively following the lead of our Lord Jesus. Jesus who lived, died, rose, and ascended so that each one of us could choose to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of personal relationship with the Lord, the gift of new life, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of eternity. Abundant life here on earth is defined as Christ-like living. Would you agree? Some suggest that we are nearing the end of time as we know it. Today, however, we will not discuss what is laid out for us in Revelation and what we can see unfolding. The time is near, if the time is near, our hearts should quicken with anticipation because Jesus will be returning. John in Revelation 21 gave us the prophetic vision. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Revelation is a love story of redemption that shows us where we are in world history and provides warnings of what to expect before Jesus returns. Our time this morning is not going to be spent on where we are in world history or how it lines up to what is in Revelation. Our focus is on what we need to do to be getting ready or to be ready for today and how our lives are to be lived out, Christ in the here and now. We don't have to wait for Christ to come back to be ready for anything Jesus asks us to do, either today or in the future. With the gift of the Holy Spirit, we can aspire to live the kingdom life right here on earth. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17. When considering the many regular people in scripture, those that are given to us as examples of how we too can aspire to be like Christ, I can't help but take a look at the life and character of Paul. Paul, a man who was as blind as blind could be, yet once he understood his faith in Jesus, it gives hope to all of us who believe and read Paul's life, story, and ministry. That could happen to Paul, who Paul was before he came to know the Lord Jesus. It can happen to each and every one of us. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that? What was Paul like? And what, was cha what changed in him so dramatically that can be changed in us too? It is easy to see that Paul allowed the Lord to work in him and through him. Paul was, if nothing else, always ready to fulfill his mission. So as we consider our scripture today, let's believe that we too can get ready and be ready to follow our Lord Jesus, no matter what he asks of us, leaving a legacy of faith, hope, and love. Paul is writing to the believers in Rome, and he starts off by thanking them for their faith. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world, Romans 1.9. If you consider all the things that you are thankful for, both in yourself and in others, would faith be the first thing to come to mind? Paul's comments here not only indicate a heartfelt thank you for those for who these people are through Jesus Christ, but informs them that it is their faith that is spoken of throughout the world. Their faith that brings hope to all who hear of their testimony. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is a gift as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3. We all have it. Some maybe more than others. 
yet in this way we have no excuse. We're gifted from the moment God knit us together in our mother's womb. The faith is there should you choose to use it and allow God to mix it with his grace. And we have the true gift of God. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 3.8. Paul was writing to a people known for their faith, spoken of throughout the world. The Christians in Paul's day did not have the internet or email or texting. They talked to one another. Yet word traveled quickly. This gives us pause to consider what our community in Clinton, New Jersey is or could be known for. What is the most important gift from God and how are we using it? As we consider this idea that we should be ready, the question is, where are you in your walk of faith? And faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ? Faith, belief that is commanded, and in his commandment that we should believe in, on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us the commandment. 1 John 3.23 we are commanded to believe and love one another. Would you agree with me that faith comes, with faith comes hope? And with hope comes love? Faith, hope, and love, with the greatest of these being love. I'm honoring my mother a little bit this morning by bringing that scripture to you. Ruminate on these words as they underpin Paul's entire ministry. He is grateful for the faith of those in Rome because he knows that faith properly placed in our Lord Jesus Christ is the essential start to the Christian life. The people in Rome had been changed by the gospel message. They were summoned ones as you are here today. There came a day when something deep inside had changed for each of them. As it has, or should you allow, will change for you. The word was out in Rome. People in the very service of Caesar were being changed. Paul had been praying and God had been answering. Let's take a moment to take a closer look at, at verse 9. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. For God is is my witness. I make mention of you always in my prayers. Prayer without ceasing. Paul is saying here with an adamant emphasis that he serves God with his spirit in the gospel of his son. This is the way that without ceasing, he makes mention of those in Rome in his prayers. There's a steadfastness from deep within that Paul carried this burden to pray. Not just now and again, but all the time. Never allow the enemy to convince you that your prayers don't matter. Our experience here in Clinton shows us time after time after time that God hears our prayers and works miracles in our lives. When is the right time to pray? Always. And you know, sometimes people say, well, I'm not praying always, but what's deep within you? And in a moment's moment, Notice what is deep within you and what comes to mind with anything and everything that you see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Paul was praying to go to visit. There was a special call on Paul's life as a preacher and a teacher and an evangelist. And I would suggest maybe a writer too. He traveled more than any one of us could ever begin to imagine. The gospel has been gifted for us to share. It's Jesus' final command to us. It belongs to Christ. It is he that made it so that it could belong to everyone else too. Do you believe that? The gospel message can belong to everyone else too. A message simply put, good news, God loves. Be reconciled, glorify God. Our faith and hope and even prayer enough to be ready? 
If we leave it there, one might come to the conclusion that the gospel is all about us and what we do, when in fact it is all about God and what the Holy Spirit empowers us to do. God is love, and that love shines through. Paul had a longing to go to see the people in Rome, for I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and of me. Be encouraged. What was the some spiritual gift that Paul wanted to impart? When the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, he has power to enable each of us to serve God in ways that we can't even begin to imagine or even think possible. Has God ever asked you, said something to you and asked you to do something? You said, I can't do that. And, and then he showed you how. And it's beautiful. These gifts operate by faith and are meant to be utilized in God's kingdom here on earth. An idea springs forth in you along with a desire to try. Your life experience up to that point might argue against the idea. Sometimes it takes a word of encouragement from another believer or the passing of a word of knowledge or special insight or even an infilling or baptism of the Holy Spirit like never before. God's gifting to us when utilized. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you, just as among the other Gentiles, so that I might have fruit among you, love, joy, peace. Not able to show you the slides, but on the back of your, your bulletin, you've got the little Galatians verse with the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. That's what he's talking about when he's talking about fruit. Would we be blessed if we got a letter from some well-known evangelist saying, I have often planned to come that I might have fruit among you, just as I have with others? Yesterday on our grounds, we were, as we should, reflecting the fruit of the Spirit into our community. For those of you that were here, it was a blessed and beautiful day. Comments were made, almost incredulous. Everyone here is so nice. And that came from some of our neighbors across the street. Was Paul unusual in his love for people? He longed to see those in Rome. Do we long to see one another in our church family here? Jesus commands us to love one another. Following a command out of obligation is one thing, but following out of love is a whole different story. Maybe a bigger question is, is do we as a community long to love those we don't know, imparting to them the most precious truth and relationship you have? That of Jesus Christ. Paul didn't know all the people in Rome. He loved them and desired to impart spiritual gifts and encourage them anyway, understanding that he too would be encouraged. The fruits of the Spirit were shining through Paul and from far away, Paul knew that if he went, he would be sharing fruit with the Christians in Rome. What is God saying to us here? I know for all of us, 2020 has been a year of great change. God is saying it is time. I think in some ways, God has always been saying it is time. God has been in pretty direct, bearing deep within me a burning desire to fully commit every waking moment to the things of the Lord. A missionary couple met with me in the back of this church I was trying to remember what month it was. It certainly was long before February came around. And relayed a vision as I was talking about my corporate world and my world here. And he relayed a vision, one that had me running full speed ahead and jumping off of a cliff, flying completely free and untethered. I said, I'm afraid of heights. And he said, you're fully equipped. The cliff jumping moment came when I took the step of faith and left my career to fully pursue my call from the Lord to ministry. 
The world might say, Lori, you have a successful career, the capacity to earn a lot of money. Keep working for a few more years and enjoy the things that retirement can bring. Is the word retirement in the Bible? I haven't found it. The Lord made it clear that he had other plans for me. Let us pray that that same desire buries deep within each of, uh, each of our hearts here as we bring new meaning to what it takes to be ready. Paul puts it this way. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Paul is ready to preach to everyone in Rome whomever might be willing to listen, not just ready like saying, hey, I'm ready to go to the grocery store or ready to sit down and share lunch with you. We get the sense that he feels obligated. We see that in the use of the word debtor. One might conclude that Paul is saying that he preaches the gospel as a volunteer, but is compelled by his divine calling. Every, elsewhere we find Paul describing that he has no grounds for boasting, for it is an obligation, an anke, if I can say it right, meaning pressure or necessity. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9.16, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. Paul had a deep feeling of obligation deep down inside, an obligation to our Lord that was born out of love for what Jesus had done for him and has done for each of us. After all, God loved enough to form each one of us perfectly designed for a free will, free will relationship with him. Yet humanity messed up that design pretty badly, but God continues to love anyway. God, who is love, took on human form, living a perfect human slash divine life, death on a cross, out of necessity for there to be forgiveness of sin for you and me. Jesus took on our sins so that the curtain could be torn and we could come into relationship with the Father through his Son, Jesus the Christ. So Jesus rose, ascended, and then the miracle of all miracles, the Holy Spirit was poured out. We are going to hear more about that next week as Pastor Scott takes us forward into chapter 2 of Acts. Saved by the grace of God. Our salvation brings with it an obligation. Would you agree? I know we say it's a free gift, but with that free gift, what's there? Something must be very wrong if we are able to rest easy knowing that others are not saved. Paul felt the obligation for everyone, all people, all races, all that are wise, all that are foolish, all that are rich, all that are poor. Pastor Scott has been encouraging us to learn to understand the world viewpoint well enough to be able to speak the language. No, it is not an easy thing to be all things to all people with the hope of touching off a spark that the Lord might use to ignite the light in some, in some of them. Spark the Lord might use to ignite a light in some of them. He asks us to go. It's his job to save. It's our job to go and tell. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also, to you who are in Clinton also, to you who are in Flemington also, to you who are in Washington also. Paul is ready. Although he is fulfilling a duty, a duty out of love, he is doing much, much more than that. The original Greek word for the word ready is prothymus, positively inclined, enthusiastically willing, eager, ready to go, free, not weighed down by pre-existing or preset objections or resistance, hence willing, spontaneously generous. You get the idea. Not weighed down by pre-existing objections. That's what we hear all the time. 
pre-existing objections. Be set free from them. Paul loved the Lord so much and was so grateful that he not only felt compelled, he was enthusiastically eager to share the gospel good news with everyone. How about you? How about me? Yes, it takes utilizing that gift of faith that God has given each of us, no matter how big it is or small it is. Yes, it is by grace that we are saved. Yes, it is very important for your relationship with the Lord to be intimate through regular prayer and study of his word. Yes, we are desperately in need of the Holy Spirit to strengthen and guide from within our hearts. Yes, be ready means willingness to follow whatever Jesus asks it, us to do, even preach without a PowerPoint. Yes, it is you and it is me that in God's plan to go and tell the good news, to love our neighbor, to love them over the top. Next week, Pastor Scott will take us a whole lot deeper into the power of the Holy Spirit and what it means to be baptized by the Holy Spirit and the resulting lifelong transformational change that occurs. So stay tuned. But for now, let us pray before our closing song. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And not only fill this place, but fill every heart within it, Lord. Bring new knowledge, bring new insight, bring new power. We know how powerful you are, Lord God. Power us up, Lord, to go out there and share the good news message of who you are, what you did, and how we are changed as a result, and just how much you love each and every one. It's in the holy and precious name that we lift this time and we lift this moment in history to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm going to uh, ask you to remain seated for this last song. Um, I, while I was sitting out there, I was thinking that years ago, I read this article about, um, I'm, I'm sorry if I don't have all the facts right, but it was about how we breathe the same air as Jesus because all this air that's been breathed somehow gets transformed and stays in there and it's all underneath and it never dissipates. And so eventually, even though it's just a tiny little particle, you breathe the same air as Jesus did. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, we're Christians. God breathed into us his Holy Spirit. <laughs> we know we're breathing the air of Jesus because he's breathed that air right directly into us and it's oxygenated and it's gotten to our systems and it's permeated our entire being. So, and that's what this song is all about. So let's sing this together and really give God the praise. Every heart 
that is broken and great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. All the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Have a wonderful day, everyone. Joy, 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 joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy, 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 joy in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. I got a new life. I got a new life. If everybody asks me, you say, What's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, be glory baptized. Jesus on my mind, I've got a new life, I've got a new life, 
I've got a new life If anybody asks you You say, what's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved Sanctified, Holy Ghost filled Water baptized, Jesus on my mind I've got a new life 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 